George from Bushcraft Days and today I'm going to be uh, showing you a little bit on what I call um, birch fans and these are little fans of birch which I use, I prepare beforehand and they're birch with a little bit of spruce and I uh, use them for fire lighting so I'll have a few of these, I'll stick them in my pack uh, when they're all dried out and they're really useful for getting my fire going uh, without having to rely on the old bushcrafters favourite of um, cotton wool balls and uh, Vaseline so it's really what nature given us uh, instead so many of you have lit birch before and um, you get a strip of birch fair enough and it's full of oils and it's very flammable I'm not doing fancy here we've got a lighter and um, see if we can get this going firstly and see what happens so it shall go but notice one of the first things that it does, the birch does, is it starts to roll, which then can make it tricky to handle. So I'm going to put it into this little fire tray here. And it does roll up a little bundle, but what it makes it difficult for it is to handle. So if I want to place that somewhere else, I've got to use a stick. So to get around that, um, I noticed in a, I think it was Ray Muir's Bushcraft Essentials book. There's a little picture one day and it says if you're using birch bark and you're going to light it using a lighter, not scraping it up with a, a knife and a fire seal but with a lighter or a match um, to, to um, form a fan. So what does he mean by that? Well, a little bit of uh, birch here, paper birch by the looks of it. So well, I'll fold it in half and then I'm going to form myself a little fan. So I'm going to fold it one way, the other and back again keep doing that until I basically form a fan shape. Now I'm just grabbing it by the raggedy end and as you can see it's a simple fan. I've got another bit of birch I've got here and I'm simply going to use that to tie off the end of the fan. So I'm going to wrap around a couple of times fairly snugly then I'm going to go over my thumb form a little gap like that and slide the ends through that little hole and pull it in snugly. And then maybe do one more. Nothing fancy about this at all. There we have it. That'll hold in. Now, what the fan is supposed to do is that when you light it, because you've got the creases, it doesn't curl quite so much. It does curl to a certain degree, but not quite so much. So you've got a good area you can hold and a good area that you can light. Now, the thing that I like to do is that I like to cover that in a bit of um, um, resin. Now, I generally can go out and find spruce resin and um, it seeps out of the side of uh, damaged parts of spruce trees, so I just use a uh, stick to scrape some off, not harming the tree in any way, uh, into a bag, and then what I'll do is I will melt it down in a tin until I've got some resin in there. So what I'm doing, be clear on this, this is for me to use later on. Um, I'm going to go off on a trip, this will be put away, I'll be inside my bergen, I need to light a fire. I'll have a few of these ready and some other stuff which I'll show you in the next video. Um, but these will be easy to light. So here I'm just going to place this end in here. Now what, notice in this one I'm placing the knotted end in because I'm going to use this fan bit to light and then as that resin, as the, as the flame burns down it will reach the resin and that bark where the resin is will burn for longer. Be careful, really hot, hence I've got a fireman's glove in this hand. Um, put it down there, and if you want to, you can add just a little bit more in. That's it, just enough, no more than that. Okay, so that will dry, put that away to dry. Got one I made earlier on, quite hard now. You can see that, yeah. 
line up now. That's great. Okay, and you can see here, I can hold it here quite happily. It's not curling up in my fingers. Now, I'm going to place it down in the fireball and step away from it. Yeah, yeah. Now, the spruce itself, you can see it gives off a kind of black smoke. That's a bit of the birch and the spruce combined together because of the oil. So, make sure you're not uh, anywhere near the smoke. And at this stage, yeah, you would be putting your uh, kindling over the top and that one bit of birch that you prepared before will burn for long enough to get your kindling going. It's really getting into the uh, spruce now and it's just a tiny bit of birch under there and it's going really well. So the thing is, you don't always have to carry cotton wool or lighters. You do have the option to have a natural lighter. And this is quite a good method, quick and easy to do. Next time, I want to show you how to make a rather more constructed fire lighter.